Hello everyone, I am your friend Shadab Imam. Do you know network analysis is the most widely used technique in project management and the two most popular network techniques are critical path method CPM and performance evaluation and review technique that is PERT. And today we are going to see the basics of CPM and PERT. So please watch this video till the end and if you are new to the channel, please subscribe the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon. So let us move here. So as we have discussed that critical path method CPM and performance evaluation and review technique PERTS are the network techniques that come under network analysis and the network analysis is one of the ways to do project management. So first of all we need to understand what project management is and before that we must understand certain terms that we will encounter in this chapter. So let us see here. So the first term we are going to encounter is activity. So what is an activity? Activity. So activity is a physically identifiable part of a project which requires time and resources for its execution and an activity is represented by an arrow. So here an activity, any activity or we can say any activity x, this x activity has been represented by this arrow and this activity consumes d i j time or cost or distance whatever it may be. So here we assume that there is an activity x which is represented by an arrow sign and it consumes the time d i j where i and j are known as events event i and j are event so now next is what is event so the beginning and end point of an activity are called events or nodes. It does not consume any time or resource. So we should understand that an activity consumes time and resource both and an event does not, con does not consume time and resource. So in activity we have different types of activities. So for one is critical activity non-critical activity and dummy activity. So first come to the critical activity. Critical activity in a network are those activities by delaying the critical activity our project is surely going to delay by that particular time. And for a non-critical activity if we delay a non-critical activity then our project may or may not be delayed and for a dummy activity dummy activity is not in actual network and it is inserted by us just to follow the precedence and the dummy activity does not cons uh, does not consume time and resources and we will see in the coming lectures what actually dummy activity is and how dummy activity can be used so here for an activity it can be critical activity, non-critical activity or a dummy activity. And an event is the starting or end of an activity. Okay and the third term is network. Now network is the graphical representation of a logically and sequentially connected arrows and nodes which represents activities and events and the networks are also known as arrow diagrams. So here by combining various activities we can form a network. So these are the terms we are frequently going to encounter. Now let us move on to project management. So for understanding the project management we know we must understand what actually project is. So according to us project is the combination of interrelated activities which must be executed in a certain order before the entire task is completed. 
सो प्रोजेक्ट इज द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ इंटर रिलेटेड एक्टिविटीज दैट मीन्स द डिफरेंट एक्टिविटीज आर रिलेटेड टू ईच अदर एंड दैट रिलेशनशिप इज नोन एज प्रिसिडेंस ओके एंड वी विल कंस्ट्रक्ट अ नेटवर्क फॉलोइंग दोज प्रिसिडेंटशिप एंड नाउ वॉट आर द बेसिक रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ अ प्रोजेक्ट सो द प्रोजेक्ट शुड बी कंप्लीटेड विदाउट एनी डिले सेकेंड द प्रोजेक्ट शुड यूज ओके सो प्रोजेक्ट शुड यूज स्मॉल मैन पावर एंड अदर रिसोर्सेज एज पॉसिबल सो इट शुड यूज एज अ स्मॉल मैन पावर एंड रिसोर्सेज एज पॉसिबल and it should involve as small investment as possible so these are the three requirements that a project should fulfill now in order to fulfill these requirements of a project project management is used here it is written that project management helps to fulfill these requirements and now coming to the project management project management can be done in three phases so here we can see that phases of project management so first is project planning then project scheduling and project uh, controlling so these are the three phases of project management and among these three phases the first two phase project planning and project scheduling occurs before the actual project starts okay so let us see what are the steps we do in project planning scheduling and controlling so in project planning the project is broken down into individual activities okay so <clears throat> the project has been broken down into activities second is the determination of time estimates of these activities so we need to calculate the time estimates how much time an activity a particular activity is going to take and establishing a precedence relationship between the activities so <clears throat> we have earlier talked about the precedence ship and on the basis of that precedence ship we will establish a precedence relationship between the various activities now coming to project scheduling in project scheduling determines the start and finish times of each activity and the earliest and the latest time at which events can occur so here we are encountering two terms first is the start and finish times of an activity so we can see that an activity has a starting event and a finishing event so the time at this point of time at this event i is starting is the starting time and the time at this event is finishing time and we have also encountered the earliest and the latest time so we can say that in this particular diagram we can see that this is the event starting event i this is finishing event d so for starting event i let e i be the earliest time and l i be the latest time similarly for this finishing activity uh, finishing event j we have e j e j this is the earliest finishing time and this is l j which is the latest finishing time so we can see that <coughs> in finishing time also we can say that how early this event i can be started or how late this event i can be starting uh, can be started are represented by earliest time ei and li similarly for finishing event how early the event can be completed uh, yeah, finishing event can be started and how late a finishing event can be started or the activity can be completed or how late an activity can be completed so these are the earliest and the latest times at which events can occur so now it is clear to us that determine the start and finish times of each activity that is 
starting time is e i n n i and the finishing times are e j and l j and the earliest and the latest times at which events can occur now determine the critical activities so previously we have discussed what are critical activities critical activities are those activities which if we delay any critical activity the project time is going to be delayed so we need to determine what are the critical activities in a network and then we need to calculate the float for non critical activities now what are floats floats are the time by which an activity can be started early on or an activity can be delayed so for a critical activity the values of float is zero so the critical activities could not be started early or late but for non critical activities we have certain value of float and we will see how to calculate flow uh, floats in the further lecture so we will calculate floats for non critical activities here now coming to the project controlling in under project controlling reviewing the progress by comparing the work accomplished to the work scheduled and find deviations so in project controlling we review the actual accomplished work and compare it with the scheduled work and find out the deviations now evaluate the effect of deviation on the project plans so what are the effect of these deviations on project plans and then update the project schedule so these are the phases of project management now let us come to cpm and pod so what is the difference between critical path method cpm and the performance evaluation and review technique pod so let us see the difference between two so as we can see the critical path method cpm it is an activity oriented network okay and for pod it is an event oriented network next is the cpm is deterministic model that means it will give a single mean time for the completion of network and whereas the pod is a probability uh, probabilistic model which which shows the probability of completing a task in certain period of time and now cpm it has a fixed time where the pod it has a range of time this means that for cpm the activity or we can say that individual activity is having a fixed time and in case of pod the individual activity will have a range of time which we will study ahead so in cpm the activity is having a fixed time in pod the activity is having a range of time similarly for cpm generally it is used for repetitive works that is uh, or example construction of house or a construction of bridge so these are used for repetitive works whereas pod generally used for non repetitive works such as launching a satellite so cpm is used for repetitive works pod is used for non repetitive works so these are the basic differences one need to remember about the cpm and pod so let us again review this cpm is activity oriented pod is event oriented cpm is deterministic model pod is probabilistic model cpm it has a fixed time for activities pod it has a range of time for activities and cpm is used generally used for repetitive works and pod is generally used for non repetitive works so this is a brief introduction about the cpm and pod and in the coming lecture we will see how to construct a network in a cpm and pod problem so stay with us if you like the lecture please share the lecture have a nice day thank you